Hi, this is Julie Lerman, author of Programming Entity Framework, with the ninth in a series of beginning Entity Framework tutorials I've created using Visual Studio 2010. You can find more of these videos at www.pluralsight.com. In this video, we'll take a look at using the POCO T4 template for generating simpler classes from your Entity Data Model. In the previous video, I showed you how to customize the default T4 template, and that template is designed to create classes that inherit from entity objects. In fact, when you begin with a default, it creates classes that are exactly the same as when you're not explicitly using a T4 template and letting all of the generation happen in the background. But not all developers want to work with classes that derive from the entity object. There are a lot of coding styles where having your classes be dependent on a different API can be a problem. Now you can create your own templates to generate whatever classes you want, so you don't have to be deriving from the entity objects. Microsoft has created a T4 template that can generate POCO objects, and we'll take a look at that template, what's in it, what kind of classes it gives us, and then run some code against it to see how that works. Now in the previous video, when I generated a new template by right-clicking the, on the designer and adding code generation item, you saw there's the entity object generator and also the self-tracking entity template, but there's nothing here about a POCO template. That doesn't come in the box. You need to install that through the extension manager. Now I've already got it installed, but I just disabled it. This is the ADO.NET C Sharp POCO Entity Generator. Again, there's one for Visual Basic, and there's another pair of these that are specially designed for if you are creating ASP.NET websites. So I'm going to go ahead and enable this. I've already deleted the first template, so there's no conflicts in the namespaces. So I will go ahead now and add another code generation, and there's the POCO Generator. And now you'll see this is a little different than what we had before. We have two templates that got added in. One is the model context and the other is the model. So this one generates the object context and the object sets that you can return and use for querying. So you, for context addresses, context customers, etc. But that's all that's in there. The other template deals with all the types, address, customer, etc. So here are all the entity classes. Now if we take a look at these, they're much simpler than the entity objects. First of all, notice it doesn't inherit from entity object. Also notice we don't have all kinds of attributes here. Taking a look at some of the scalar properties, the primitives, very, very simple. There's really nothing going on here at all. Um, and then if we look at the navigation properties, there's a little extra code in here for the navigations because the classes that the POCO template creates do some fixing up for relationships. So if you have two-way relationships and you define one of them, for example, you add an address to the customer's addresses collection, it will treat this as a two-way collection so that you can navigate not only from customer to the addresses, but it will ensure that you can also navigate from that address back to the customer. So you have two-way, and that's what this all the uh, fix-up navigation is about, and there's some additional methods in here. All but one of these classes that you see over here are based on the entities in the model. The only thing that's different is this Model 1 class, and the Model 1 class actually provides the logic that all of that fix-up work depends on. There's one other thing I want to point out about these classes that are generated. You may have noticed this before. Every one of the properties in here has the virtual keyword. Virtual in C Sharp is the same as overridable in Visual Basic. And I just want to have you see every single thing, even the navigation properties, they're all marked virtual. By marking all of these properties virtual, these entities are able to do something very special and very specific to the Entity Framework runtime. At runtime, what these will do is spin up on the fly in memory something called a dynamic proxy. And the dynamic proxy will give these classes much of the same functionality you would get from an entity object. So you get a little bit of the best of both worlds. You don't have the type binding to the APIs as you're defining your classes, 
but you can still have all of those benefits of the entity framework. These classes here don't know anything about the context. They don't know anything about entity framework. But at runtime, with this dynamic proxy, they'll be able to send change notification back up to the context, so the context can keep track of the changes, and when you call save changes, it will do what you expect it to do. Now, you're not forced to use the dynamic proxies. You can remove the virtual keywords from your properties, and then you won't have the dynamic proxy behavior. But then there's a little more responsibility you'll need to take to get some of the behavior that you expect with Entity Framework. In a future video, I'll show you some of the ins and outs of the POCA support with Entity Framework. But what I'll do for now is we'll take these classes and write a little bit of code against them and make some changes and do some updates so that you can see everything still works as expected. And the benefit here, again, is for developers who don't want to have their classes bound to the Entity Framework runtime, yet they still want to take advantage of the features of the Entity Framework. One other note to make here is that you can have POCO objects without generating them from T4. You can just have your own classes. Perhaps you have them from a previous application that you've written. You can use them in Entity Framework with a model without using T4 generation. But again, that's not something I'll be covering in this particular video. So let's flip over to the code and take a look at how our new classes continue to work with the Entity Framework. Here's the method I'll use to check out some of the behavior of my new POCO entities. And remember, I'm using the entities that have marked all of the properties as virtual so that I get the dynamic proxies at runtime and also that automatic behavior that I would get with an entity object for the change tracking and lazy loading and things like that. So in this method, I'm first grabbing a customer from the database and then I'm creating a new order adding that new order into the customer's collection of sales order headers, and then calling Save Changes. Let's run this right up until we call Save Changes and take a look at a few things. The first I want to show you is the customer. Now look at this customer. It's not just a plain old customer type, but it's a dynamic proxy, and it's automatically generated and has this GUID in here. Now I've also created the order and already added it into the sales order headers collection. And what I want to show you here is that two-way fix-up. Now, the two-way fix-up is not the something that's done by the dynamic proxy. It's done by that special code that I showed you that the template generated. So I've added this into here. So now the order is part of the sales order headers collection. But if we take a look at this order in Quick Watch, we can see that we can all, we're also navigating back to that customer object. So the the generated code took care of that fix up for me, so I've got the two way generation. Now I'll go ahead and finish this. So, over in the SQL profiler, we'll see the query for the customer and the insert that pushed the sales order header into the database. And if we look at this parameter here, we can see that it used the ID of the customer. Now, there's one additional query here. I did a select of all of the orders for the customer whose ID is 5. Now, I didn't write any code for that. Where did that come from? What happened is that lazy loading is on by default, and lazy loading still works with the POCO entities. And when I called sales order headers dot add, I actually <laughs> caused lazy loading to execute a query for sales orders for that particular customer. So let's turn that off and watch the behavior again. Context options, lazy loading enabled equals false. And run this again. Then back over to profiler. And we can see we only had the two commands here, the customer query and the insert command. So the important thing to take away from here is that, yes, I've got the POCOs. I've used the the default POCO template, and for the most part, I have the behavior that I expected. But it's really important to understand that there are a set of strict rules that you need to follow when coding and when interacting with your entities. And you can find those rules on a blog post from the Entity Framework team, and I'll include a link to that at the end of this video. So now you've seen how to get the POCO template through the Extension Manager. 
what type of classes it generates, and how to work with those classes. You can also customize that template to generate classes that suit your needs even better. And if you're looking to create POCO classes from a template, this is a much better starting point than using the Entity Object template because there's so much to strip out of that one. I'm Julie Lerman, and thanks for watching this video on generating POCO classes with a POCO T4 template. Here are some links and resources for you.